Oops, yeah. Roll sound, roll camera. Elizabeth. Christopher. I flew all the way to Los Angeles for you. For me. I'll take one marker. To be treated like dog shit. Are you joking? You <laughs> have been nothing but rude to me Are since the joking? moment you walked in. I walked out to greet you. With your dick out. No, she's objectifying me. She <laughs> I was not objectifying him. Chris, did he come out to greet you with his dick out? No. Did he come out to greet you? Yeah. Then his dick was out. Because <laughs> he wasn't wearing panties. <laughs> and you can see the full fucking You showed thing. up 20 minutes early. It's not my fault. I don't I have panties on when I'm preparing you, for I the show. I did not ask you to come out. I was minding my own business in my car, and you came out to show me your dick. Just enjoy the <laughs> ring of Saturn. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that what you call your dick? Well, that's what you can see. The ring of Saturn? When somebody's not wearing do, underwear. Do other people call their penises <laughs> Yes, recently I heard. No, 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 no. Like Who when told you that? I was listening to a different radio show, and that's how they referred to it, because they were talking about like hiking in LA yeah. and walking around, seeing everyone's rings of Saturn. Wow. I think I, I don't know if that works. I'm surprised. You're such a prude. I just don't know if it works because an, a, like Saturn is around. No, it's the ring because the mushroom no, top I, of the penis yeah, if do. you're circumcised. I know, but that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not like, making sense to you? I mean, mushroom top adds up for me. You know, but like you that checks out. you see the full mushroom. It's not like I'm hard walking out to greet you. No, you're. It, no. You, but you don't have to be because Elizabeth? you're wearing tissue paper pants, bro. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. So if it was pointed out, then you would see the mushroom because of how the fabric would be going when it's laying flat who down said, or, you only see the outer Saturn? ring who? you only see the outer <laughs> ring chris oh my god chris have you ever heard anyone call your dick the ring of saturn no only when you're i wearing, know only when you <laughs> wow and well, to think i had to face my fear of flying get drunk on the plane have a headache this morning and still go through with filming two episodes for you <laughs> It's not just for me. It's for Chris, No, too. I told you. What kind of working conditions were you pissed about just now? Oh, that the AC was on when it's 95 degrees outside. And you know outside. what? I have to say, it's a little warm in here now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. When she was just about to strike. Literally, she said, we have power in numbers, Chris. Let's walk out until the air is off. And I said, you know what? I'll just cancel the show. It's not that I'm looking for new employees. I'm just going to cancel the show oh altogether. Oh, my God. Uh, we get it. You hold all the power. The rings of Saturn are yours. I don't hold all the power you guys can go off and start a podcast it's not like you're in get your shit chris it's not like i have you <laughs> down let's with... go keep rolling keep rolling are you not allowed to do anything else under what we're doing no i guess not but i do love that you said <laughs> chris we're sitting in his office and he goes you know like it's just in colorado like i don't have any friends who can just like in the middle of the day go hiking and get lunch and i was like so you miss your unemployed friend <laughs> you miss it you miss your unemployed friend lizzie That's, <laughs> which she took as like a compliment <laughs> she was like you missed me but no it's just the culture in la is very is unemployed well <laughs> or it's like people are somehow rich and still not working during the middle of the day we're nepo babies and i'm not one but i like to think that i am i'm one. not one either right <laughs> no you're not okay well it sounded like you were saying implying that i was with that face no i like to pretend that i am one <sighs> okay that has nothing to do I'm with you and your saying, saturn rings and maybe i just don't have as many or as close of friends in colorado but it does feel like the culture is different here where sometimes in colorado like i like to break up my day of like working and then going out for a couple of hours whether that be working out or going out and then coming back and working a little more yeah and in colorado it's just a different vibe in terms of like la everyone's going to lunch everyone's hiking it just feels <laughs> like we're supposed to be sitting out on a patio eating delicious yeah. healthy food food and, and writing like, it off dying of laughter and <laughs> calling it work somehow and it just doesn't feel like that happens as often in colorado do <laughs> no, you know what i mean it doesn't. and even if you do go to lunch there it doesn't feel the same for some reason no I, but i have to say like literally the other day i was like oh fuck i could really wish i could go to heritage cafe right now no the food is still great in colorado yeah. it's just a different feeling i don't know oh it's definitely a different vibe people yeah. have jobs <laughs> 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 no one comes to LA to work maybe. <laughs> I came here for someone to throw money at me so I could stay home with my dog and especially on this strike it's like I bet yeah. the restaurants are more, more full than ever I was actually thinking about applying for a restaurant job and then I remembered they wouldn't hire me why <laughs> because they never have <laughs> Because they never have. It's not for lack of trying. Okay. Well, okay. do you want to talk about some serious things that have been going on with you? Do you, why do you want to feel my cyst? 
No, but I'm looking at that thing that's well, goozing right now. It's not goozing, but touch this. It's oozing and touch goozing. Touch my lumps. I have a lump under my eye. Touch it. It's very firm. It's confusingly firm. Wait, do you really it does want feel me to like touch it, it? Yeah. It just feels like okay. bone. <gasps> oh, my God. You feel that? Now I... Wow. Now I do understand why you've been scream concerned. Because it's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one growing on this side, too. Wait, on both sides? Yeah. Okay, so I'm pretty sure... The dermatologist was right. So the dermatologist, I have. Well, take us back. For for all of you audio only motherfuckers, I have a couple of lumps <laughs> <laughs> under my eyes, and it's not just because I'm tired. They're weird and they feel a little bit like bone. They're very firm. If there's anybody in the comment section that could diagnose me, I'll take your diagnoses. So Lizzie tried to get an appointment at her dermatologist, and this is also very LA. My the dermatologist was a bitch. <laughs> and same with restaurants. Restaurants yeah. here are bitches too. Like you call for an appointment and they're like, yeah, right. They're and like, it's like, <laughs> what? Like this was, and that was the tone of my dermatologist. Was like, hey, so like I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I noticed that I had like half a pea size firm, like lump on my eye socket. And now it's like basically the size of my pinky nail, which is concerning me that it's grown so rapidly. She goes, yeah, we're not going to be able to get you in anytime soon. And I was like, okay, like even for like an emergency situation, like perhaps a growing firm lump under my eye. <laughs> it's like your standard appointment. You don't, yeah. I feel like dermatologists should have like a slot, an emergency slot right. open a week. And then I know from what dealing with jelly and jelly needing emergency care care is that there's always a cancellation list. You can put yourself mm -hmm. on a list where if someone gets can like cancels their appointment, you can come in to see them. But generally, I feel if you're in charge of scheduling and someone's like, I have an emergency and you say I have no openings for months and months, but I do have a cancellation list. You should offer up the cancellation list. Yeah, I had to ask. I was like, do you have a list? Can I give you my number in case someone cancels because I live nearby or some shit? And she goes, yeah, sure. And then I go and, you're, <laughs> and I was like, all right, dude. And then I go, are you sh absolutely positive that there's no way just for like like this sort of emergency situation for me to get in so that this woman can see this lump because I feel like waiting four weeks is probably not a good call. Right. And she goes, let me ask you something. And I go, okay. <laughs> she goes, what's your phone number? I give her my phone number. She goes, we'll see you at the end of the month. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, it's okay. It's like that. <laughs> so I sent her my dermatologist, who I do really love. There's multiple doctors, though, and yeah. it seems as though you got a different doctor than me. I got, okay, first of all, they got me in the day I called. Mm -hmm. which is incredible they were like just so you know we're our doctors are booked through december but it sounds like you've got some weird shit going on you should get your ass in here and i said thank you for understanding the severity of my lumps and so they were like can you come in today i was like absolutely i can come in today it was also by the way friday which was a rough fucking day and like side story bubs was nauseous and if but and I, i've never seen bubs sick so i was flipping out about bubs being sick so i'm also on the phone trying to get bubs in to see his vet while I'm trying to get in to see my own vet. And I also thought about asking the vet to just do a biopsy of the lump for me it. because they would have told me right away. <laughs> like, and I'm still thinking about asking them because I go to your dermatologist and they're fucking lovely. They just had a nurse that could see me. And the first thing the nurse does, he won't even touch me, which was a little bit annoying because it's like, you have to touch this to understand. The man? Yeah. When the woman came in to touch me, yeah. she had to pull in a backup woman. I had a backup woman I, with my man. I understand, but it is it does feel a little like... Yeah. Come on. We're not going to do butt stuff here. Right. Well, you were doing butt stuff. I was just trying to get my eye lump touched. And he kept being like, that's your eye socket. And I was like, no, dude, like I've had these eye sockets for 33 years and this is new. And he's like, he pulls up a picture of an eye socket online. And I was like, bro, this is like, on, like, honestly, like, I know I must come off some type of way for you to feel the need to show me what an eye socket looks like. But if you could just take your fucking hands and put them on my face and touch my lump, you would understand what the fuck my concern is. And so finally he puts a finger on my face and he goes, oh, oh, that is weird. And I was like, yeah, dude, super weird, right? Like, what the fuck is that? He's like, I don't know, man. I'm going to go pull one of the doctors out of their meetings and have them come in here and look at it because I can't tell you. He's like, I don't think it's like a uh, skin level cyst because skin level cysts apparently have some sort of calling card visually that mm -hmm. I don't remember what he said and it didn't make sense to me. So whatever, it's not that. And then he goes, I see on your uh, record, you have a history of melanoma. Can I see it? And so I show them my scar from where I had the malignant melanoma cut out and they did an inch around and down. So like if I didn't have an open wound right now, I would let you could poke into my wound um, and then he goes, oh, that doesn't look right. And I was like, what do you mean it doesn't look right? He's like, the pigmentation on your scar does not look right to me. And I was like, 
I mean, a few other dermatologists well, have seen it and have never expressed could concern. Could have been botched just because I know like not every scar heals the same. Right. So it's the and it, mine was botched because I had an allergic reaction to the stitches and to the Neosporin oh, and to the Band-Aids because I'm a fucking ginger. So it was botched. But the fact that I have a scar that had a massive amount of pigmentation grow and stretch upon it mm -hmm. made him uncomfortable. And I was like, all right, dude. Like, is this the doctor now or still the nurse? So this is still the nurse. The doctor comes in. He goes, I don't know what the fuck to tell you about those eye lumps. It seems like it's a, like not a dermatological issue. So I cannot help you. But I suggest you get an MRI. So now I have to wait for my insurance to kick in to go get an MRI, which I, are, I had gotten insurance like the day before. So that's not, it's whatever. And then he goes, let me see that arm. And he's like, yeah, I don't like that at all. And so the fact that he doesn't like it makes me super stressed out because it's like, well, that shit's been running rampant for 11 years, bro. <laughs> like, and not a single other person has had a problem with it. Well, I'm just going to hope that he's being extra cautious. Oh, yeah. Whereas like, I've if cut pimples out of my arms. You know what I mean? I've had dermatologists cut pimples out and biopsy them after they tell me to my face they're a pimple. I'm like, right, let's still cut it out. And <laughs> like, let's send that to the lab, guys. So my my motto is when in doubt, cut it out. So we cut it out. Right. Yeah. Well, and oh, it's a grueling process to wait for those results. Sometimes they take two weeks for like dermatologist labs. Yeah. And he did suggest that this might have been from your His Botox or your filler, which now that you're telling me they're on both sides, I'm kind of like. But I never put I never put filler in my fucking eye right not, here. But your nose, it would just travel down a little bit. I, no, I never put it in my nose. Oh, I don't know how this works. I put it like here, you know, and, it, mean, and it was and it wasn't even this much. It is very concerning to have a bump under your eye. Yeah, it's weird as fuck. Yeah, Cause like I had even after like Chloe had the uh the cancer on her face, I got a mosquito bite there, yeah. but it was just really firm hard a firm hard lump that was like growing mm. and I picked it and then it scarred and it stayed there for like two months like the yeah so I was convinced but it finally went away and then I had a lump on my eye too but it's just like when you have things on your yeah. face especially and this it's is so like unsettling. hard as bone and they're equally on both sides they're not equal so one's here and one's here and this one's new and growing. And so you have to get into the doctor to get an MRI, but your yeah. insurance hasn't kicked in just and yet. And so, yeah, and because it's Kaiser, I have to see a general practitioner <sighs> first, and then they're going to send me to an MRI. And then all of this has also stunted our baby planning. So because I, you can't get an MRI if you're pregnant, so now we just have to pump the brakes on all that until I get that done. Right, because, yeah. I mean, God forbid something were wrong. You also don't want to be, like, pregnant and stressed if you yeah. have to deal with yeah. something larger, which... I don't think it will be. I mean, I hope it's filler. Scenario. I hope it's filler gone bad, but I don't think it is because I was like three years ago and it died like filler like leaves within two years. Mm. So I just I have a hard time believing that it's like for two years, the filler's fine. And then on day, you know, right. 695, it's like, no, let's act out. Um, do you know who Maria Menounos is? No. Oh, well, she's been a TV host forever. And she's oh, is like her a, husband a named Kevin? Yeah. Why do you know? I know them. But I didn't realize, I mean, I know I I'm, I have a friend that knows him. So I've been in the room with him a few times and like had like conversations, but I didn't know who he was. Okay. Well, anyways, they <laughs> struggled with infertility for yeah. a very long time. They uh, got uh, pregnant with via surrogate, mm -hmm. like with an, an embryo of his and hers. And while their surrogate was pregnant, she found out she had a brain tumor mm. And so while she was doing that, she's like, it took me 10 years to like get pregnant mm -hmm. with a child, even it's a surrogate. And then she found out she had a, a brain tumor while this is all like mm -hmm. her dreams are coming true and something. So I was watching because now her baby is born. Uh, the brain is taken care of. And I was uh, she get filled in on like live with now Kelly and Mark because mm -hmm. her husband's now the co-host. But Kelly was absent and they were just talking about how she coped and she was like well i went to a lot of different therapists and a lot of different people and something that stuck with me was choosing wonder over worry so mm. instead of worrying about what's going to happen it's like well i wonder what it's going to be like when the doctor calls and gives me the good news right. i wonder what it's going to be like when i find out i'm pregnant mm. you know and i just thought that was so powerful because it is like with so many things that you can't control instead of choosing to focus on everything that could go yeah. wrong at all times because I also like stress out and like to think I can control everything when I'm like actually not in control of anything. Yeah. So I've even just been implementing that and being like, well, I wonder what it's going to feel like when instead of just like spiraling. I do into like a that. Doomsday. I do like that. That is much better. <laughs> like manifesting. Yeah. 
because I do think you're. I went thought- straight to, well, I'm not going to have to mourn the loss of Joe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by the one, the only, SeatGeek, who, you know, not only got me to Taylor Swift, but we're also doing a giveaway on my TikTok for two floor seat tickets to one of her LA shows. And with over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. My happiest that I ever am is when I'm seeing Taylor Swift, and SeatGeek can help not only me, but you guys accomplish that too, with artists like Taylor Swift, the Jonas Brothers, Big Time Rush, Drake, and Beyonce all on tour right now. You are not going to want to miss out. The thing I love about SeatGeek is they put all of the tickets across the web in one place to make sure that you're getting a great deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. And every single ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know, SeatGeek came through for all of you guys. Use our code SIP for $20 off your tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code SIP. Make sure you click the link in our description to download their fantastic app. SeatGeek, I love you so much. Everyone, $20 off your first tickets with promo code SIP. (laughs) That was my silver lining. (laughs) But we do love wonder. (laughs) I do wonder. (laughs) Okay, do you want to talk about what's going on with your car? Oh, you know what's crazy? Last June blew ass. This July sucks ass. Really? I'm horrified for what the fuck September next year brings. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it feels like it's piling on. Honestly, if I had to scale last June to this July, I think last June is still worse. I don't remember. I mean, I had multiple deaths and COVID. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so and, and and my fucking car's still broken. But there's hope. Because oh, there's hope. Screwed. They replaced both the batteries, and for two thousand dollars, I can drive my car another nine months. <laughs> <laughs> so life's good. <laughs> I wonder what it's gonna be like when it's better. <laughs> do I really do? I wonder. It's crazy. <laughs> good thing I'm fun employed and can go hiking and get lunch in the middle of the day, though, right? <laughs> It's fine. People hate when we throw any laughs. They think it's fake, but it's like you can't fake that when you throw any laughs. Ooh, okay. Um, so do we want to talk about bar- what is what's the fucking term? Barbenheimer? Barbie Hyber? Mm-hmm. Bar- <laughs> Oppenheimer? Wait, okay. Just kidding. Oppenheimer. Barbenheimer. I didn't see Oppenheimer. I didn't even watch the trailer. The visuals of the poster looked boring enough for me to not even click on the trailer. Oh my God. So I was out without even knowing what You're the crazy. premise of the movie happens to be. Yeah. Do you know that we dropped two atom bombs in Japan during World War II? Yeah. Okay, so it's about the guy that built those bombs. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's about the... Um, it's kind of about the cost of war. Or, or as he continually tries to frame it for himself, the cost of peace and the idea uh, it's, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. Okay. It was, it was intense as fuck. I will be going to see it again. That's wild. I loved it. I think it was fucking awesome. Cause isn't it like three hours? Yeah, it doesn't feel like it, though. It's very fast. Wow. It's like a sprint, and then it's like a... Oh. Well, Barbie, on the other hand, was two hours, and I felt like couldn't have been longer. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what to expect with either film, because I try really hard not to even watch trailers, because then my brain's like, let's guess, let's guess, let's guess. Well, from what I heard, both of these were marketed... Uh, uh- quite different than what they actually play as like they Mm. did market barbie as like a blockbuster which i do feel like it's a little bit more of like an awards film yeah it's indie you know what i'm saying and i really loved barbie i liked the world i liked i liked so much about it but i still got bored and was ready to leave the theater because i was bored i mean i had an interesting day because i saw oppenheimer at 10 30 in the morning (laughs) and then i went got frozen yogurt and saw barbie immediately after at 4 p.m um and the interesting thing is that they're both kind of about like existential crises and also social issues right and um i like i really i really loved the free roam imagination of barbie i think greta gerwig gerwigged the fuck out of it which congratulations to her the biggest opening for a female director of all time that's great the biggest box office opening 
of the year. And also, I would argue she's the one who really lit the fuse on the Barbenheimer activities because she and Margot Robbie posted that picture with their Oppenheimer tickets saying we're going, wow. you know, and then Chris Nolan was like, I'm going to Barbie. And and previously, the Internet was already laughing about the fact that such a heavy movie like Oppenheimer would be opening with such a heavy movie, like or with such a like a light movie like Barbie. Right. And uh, there had been like talks of Barbenheimer on the Internet already. But like, I really do feel like Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig posting that like lit the fucking fuse. Yeah. And I'm so impressed by both Greta and Margot Robbie. I didn't I, I sounded like a hater at the beginning. I did not hate the movie. I don't think I'd watch it a few more times. I think had it been a half an hour shorter. I maybe would have like raved about it a little bit more mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean the message wasn't impactful I liked what they were trying to or what they did say in the movie I thought the set design was incredible I thought the outfits were incredible the world was so fun mm -hmm. to live inside of um, I do wish they would have showed us a little bit more of their messaging than just saying it at us but I yeah. get why they did that yeah. and again like I support the message I'm into the message I, I, I just like it wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I think when it was fun, it was fun. It was right. really fun. When it was fun, it was really fucking fun. Mm -hmm. And there's... um, So, like, I kind of vacillate on this, right? Because I'm the kind of person who, like, is unavoidably myself right. you know what i mean as much as it hurts me to be exactly who the fuck i am i can't stop being this person <laughs> as much as it enrages as some much of you. as you guys can't <laughs> fucking stand me i will never be sorry because i can't not be this person <laughs> this is who i this is who i am and guess what guys if i go to the gym i sleep fine at night so i i feel like i wish in my heart that everybody had that Mm -hmm. I wish in my heart that everybody had the audacity to just fucking be themselves without the need for the validation of other people approving of it mm -hmm. for it to be okay. You don't need anybody to tell you you're you and that's fine for it to be fine. That's an internal thing that you got to find. Right. And so I was um, my walk away from Barbie is I to some degree felt a bit patronized. But then I realized like that's a very sub that's a subjective experience for me, right? right? Because not everybody has walked through life with their, you know, horse blinder tenacity blind like on. And uh, it might be important for some people to hear you are enough, <laughs> you know, and it might be important for some people to hear like you don't have to want to change the world to be OK. Mm -hmm. So I do get why it's an important message for a lot of people. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm like frustrated by people not knowing that they're OK. Like you, it's OK to be you. Right. So th that's my like that's my own experience with it. But yeah. I am grateful that it was packaged in such a way because, you know, Barbie is so polarizing. I wasn't allowed to play with Barbies as a little really? girl. Yeah. Because my mom was worried that they would give me body image issues. And I did like that, like, in the movie, Margot comes from a place where she's oblivious to that. Yeah. She's like, no, in my mind, we're empowering yeah, women. Yeah, this is great. And so I did love all the different plays on everything. And I thought the movie overall was so well crafted. Yeah. I, to, to me, the standout was Margot Robbie. The internet is all ablaze on Ryan Gosling. And I really like Ryan Gosling. Yeah. But I just feel like... God, I loved Margot Robbie in this movie. And like for her to be such a girl boss, mm -hmm. like just and just like she's the reason this movie was conceptualized. She mm -hmm. went to Greta with the idea of Barbie and said, can you write this script and direct this movie? Yeah. And was there on the ground floor, her and Greta together, like making this mm -hmm. come to life that is now the biggest opening of the year. And it's also like, the, uh, to be honest, this is the only way to have made the Barbie movie because she, like Greta and Margot hit every single pro and con. Mm -hmm. Every single one. Yeah. And they leave open the space for it to be like, you know, the impactful message of, you know, be who you be. Right. And I guess when I like come from a place at the beginning when I say, well, I got a little bit bored. It's like me thinking to when I went to the movies in high school, like, I don't know, like, or if you're a mom taking your daughter, I guess it's a good conversation starter. But like, it's yeah. not the movie I would like if I what was a mom right now and had a, a 10 year old daughter it's not the movie that i thought i, I was taking her to do yeah you, do you I, know what i mean i don't i mean you know when i have a 10 year old kid i'm probably not gonna have the boundaries that i claim to have right now without a 10 year old child right but i do like so 
you know, my mom telling me that Barbie is going to give me body image issues, her saying that to me actually gave me body image issues. Right. Because well, I might not have thought of it. Which is crazy. I might have seen, because, you know, like I never picked up a water baby and thought, why aren't I full of water? And that, then now I'm thinking like, oh, when I pick up a Barbie, you know, you know, my mom is right. Why don't I? And so I, my brain might not have made that connection otherwise. And isn't it wild, though, that your mom trying to protect you in a way that like you just. Yeah. Parenting is going to be so challenging. Yeah. But and, and I don't mean that to to throw shade at my mom. No, no, no. I think my mom was doing she had good intentions. Yeah. But that's and what the, I'm saying and, is wild about parenting. Yeah. And that's also one of the things I walked away from this movie with, because I do feel like by by giving name and uh time and power to this this power dynamic between men and women and the patriarchy and all of that if i'm showing my kid this for them to accept the lesson they have to first buy that they are perceived as less than and because i never perceived that i was less than somebody else i didn't have that disconnect do you know what i'm saying yeah but I don't know that I want to program the acceptance of that disconnect into my kid or if I want my kid to experience that themselves and have an organic uh, an organic sort of evolution through. And it's so heady. You know what I mean? It is. It's wild. Because I, do, I don't know what's right because just not, not making a movie about a problem doesn't mean the problem doesn't exist. Well, and that's not... I think like having the movie out there is great. Yeah. It's just it wasn't marketed as that. So then if you're going in blind yeah. with your 10-year-old daughter, you didn't know that that's technically what you were signing up for because it's marketed at Pinkberry. And like yeah. it's so heavily marketed yeah. as a blockbuster. So I'm not saying the movie's a problem. No, no, I'm not it's, either. But, I'm, but I'm this, talking about the I'm talking about the social conversation of it. Which is also wild wild when you bring it into like the whole parent thing and just yeah. like that in general yeah and i mean you know the relationship between the mom and the daughter in the film as well like that's that's fairly similar you know and it's that was an interesting exploration of uh, varying generations being educational to both yeah and i had seen margot talking about well a, a lot of the actors that signed up they were like we read this script and we we're like it's never going to be made a, as is like mm -hmm. hollywood's going to take this and never like let this come out to be what it is which is magical mm -hmm. and i do agree with them like i think all the things that they hit on all the points that they're challenging uh, the conversations that they're starting is incredible mm -hmm. i personally as an audience member just got like i was like okay we can wrap this up at some point yeah i i mean i also think it was very insider baseball because like i identify with a lot of it as a as a woman in film and right. writing like i'll be fucking goddamned if another dude's like you haven't seen the godfather it's like no dude i've fucking disassociated through the godfather a million fucking times while you talk through it right <laughs> and i just don't and guess what i don't care you know what I mean? So like a lot of those jokes really worked for me because right. that has been my experience. That is a shared experience. If someone, if you try to explain to me Photoshop one more fucking time, I'm going to put your face in the toilet and flush it. I've never tried to explain to you Photoshop. I mean, thumbnails. You send me thumbnails <laughs> and I just say, well, why don't you learn Photoshop? Right. Because I, I would say him. that to anyone, man, <laughs> woman, gay, straight. Exactly. And that's the other thing, like, uh, you know, I, as I spend a lot of time with men and I notice that men do this to men too. Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. I think it was the daughter that said, if there's one thing women can agree on and men can agree on, it's that they all hate women. Right. And I thought that was interesting, too. I was like, oh. But they challenged a lot of things. So, yeah. And who am I to say it's too long? Because if I was Greta and I was Margot and I got this green lit and I had a message to tell, like, why would I chop it down if the points are all valid? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I so, just, there's literally you, like, I don't think you can say a bad thing about it. Yeah. I mean, my only bad thing I can say about it is I was like, OK, we can wrap this right. up. I mean, but that doesn't mean yeah. it's bad. I was just no, ready it's just to go. not your kind of movie. No, it was. I liked the oh. movie a lot. I think if they would have cut 20 minutes out of it, I'd be like, I'm already raving about it. But mm -hmm. I would have been like telling everyone it's like the you can't miss this. Yes. Yeah. But it's not something I would like go watch again because it's so yeah. long. I might watch the first half again. And I'm just, you know, uh, I would say 100% of my friends or 99% of my friends have all said like this movie fucking hit me. I was in a puddle on the floor. And it's like, that's fucking important. Yeah, I that's agree. That's important. It's just impressive what they were able to accomplish. Yeah, it's empowering as fuck. Yeah. It's empowering as fuck. The making that world play. Yeah 
is like something to cheer about. Yeah. To begin with. And and my I would say my favorite thing about it is like because it, it, like in these meetings, everyone's like validate this, justify that, make make me understand why you made this choice. And it's like, are you asking everyone to make you understand why you made this choice? Or are you just asking me that because of your own biases? Right. So when in the movie, when they're talking about like this, the travel from what X to Z place or whatever. I don't want to give any spoilers, right. but it's abs- it's an absurd visual travel that makes no sense. And that Margot, I think Margot Robbie char- Mar- Margot Robbie's character is just like, yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that so much because it just for me like enforces this thing of like no is a complete answer. You don't need an excuse. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That was the choice I made. Isn't that crazy? Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's full stop empowerment and i love that i love full stop empowerment (laughs) (laughs) okay well did you celebrate your ninth anniversary no we fucked that up are you kidding me honestly after i got in a whole fight with you (laughs) are you kidding me well did you celebrate shane's birthday the way i planned it no but i really went all out what did you do well we had a full-blown day like i had uh, it was an experience from the moment he woke up what was the experience well he woke up we love dutch brothers coffee but they they're not on any of the delivery apps so you do have to go sit through their line mm-hmm. which is like so long always it's always a 20 minute experience to get through that line yeah and so before he woke up i went through i got his coffee but he hates the coffee after it sat for an hour so i brought another cup and dumped all the ice out so that it would stay Aww. fresh i froze the ice so when he woke up i handed him his fresh dutch brothers coffee and then he had his whole like gift experience Cute. which i had the cutest wrapping paper made of his face i saw that i love that and then it was like pool themed because he's been having so much well we don't have a pool in colorado yeah. but he just well and that was my idea because they don't have a pool in colorado i sourced amazon links so that he could put a pool in the truck bed of Brittany. and that's a great idea but he likes his pool like a hot tub and I didn't right. know how I was going to heat that water. And just leave it so out. So that for was the flaw in your plan, right? So then I, so the other thing we love to do is go up to Black Hawk, Hawk and gamble. Like you stay the night, you, you play on the tables all night, and we just had so much fun. The two of us, like running around like idiots, yeah. gambling all night, and it fun. was so much fun. But I do have to say, the way road rage can enter my body without my permission <laughs> is so insane. Like we're driving up these windy mountain roads and there's a construction zone i and it's like the lanes that you can't get over Mm -hmm. so i am in the fast lane going 10 over the speed limit right this truck comes up behind me tailgating my ass but it's not like i can get into the other lane a because it's too busy but b because it's a solid line construction zone and so like i'm trying to go faster to please him so i'm not getting in drama with this man Mm -hmm. and then once the construction lane finally ends and there's an opening for me to get over i just get over and i was like oh we're fine he goes by and he fucking flips me off for like 20 seconds oh my god and the way for, that not a 20 second flip off entered my body <laughs> without my because per- i wasn't trying to even be mad like right. i was trying to be you're like un- you're an unbothered chill. king i moved over yeah. and i was like this is fine i took a deep breath i looked over t- at him i saw his big fucking aerodescent glasses that were like half of his face Ugh. and i was like like we're not on the I, fucking, I already fucking hate you but baseball then he diamond passes, loser he starts flipping me off for 20 seconds and i had to like <laughs> talk myself off the ledge like um, i sometimes I, was, I could follow someone home and murder their family but now i understand why like normally like i'll get mad if someone's tailgating but like rage doesn't enter my body like right. this and now i understand how some people like crazy things happen because of road rage yeah because I could have done horrific things to yeah. that man. And if like, I had been with you, I would have backed you up 100% because that's what friends do. And Shane's not into the road rage. So I just sat there and I was like, this is about him. This isn't about you. This is fine. This rage I didn't ask for. I just need to release it. But it's crazy, like the adrenaline yeah. and the rage that can yeah. enter my body unprovoked. Yeah. There was this woman when I was driving Bubs to the vet who was just riding my ass and it's like I would get over into another lane and she would follow me really closely and then it's like I'm we're merging onto the freeway and it's like I have a fucking dog in my seat that's not doing well bitch. I'm also not going under the speed limit. I'm going the speed limit yeah. and you can get into another fucking lane. She starts railing on her horn while she passes me just looking at me and I was like oh bitch. <sighs> And that's why, like, also, like, when I get that way in public, I try to remember, like, everybody has a sick dog in their car. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, just, I'm going to treat everyone as if they have a sick dog in their car. And I try to remember, too, like, even on the road to this house, it's one way 
I drive it every day. Not everybody does. Yeah. And so like when I'm still trying to go five over the speed limit, but somebody's going 10 under the speed limit, I try to remind myself they don't know this road. It's yeah. windy. It's a one way road. You just need to take a deep breath. It's not going to be the end of the world if it yeah. takes two more minutes to get to your house. Yeah. But like sometimes like I am on the other end as well. Not as aggressive as this truck driver. But yeah, I no, it's wild. The, the way she, these people, they're not treating us like we have six dogs in our car. Okay, so what about your anniversary? Oh, right. So That was quite the workaround, and I didn't forget. I mean, we did. We did forget our anniversary. It was our ninth anniversary. We fucking forgot it fully. I only, no, you didn't. Well, only I remembered it the day of. No, you used it as an excuse for me to stop fighting with you. Yeah, after I remembered about it. <laughs> so you just didn't want to work. Right. <laughs> um, Lizzie filmed one video in Colorado that was filmed between two podcasts that we filmed a total of 40 minutes. And I've now turned it into three vlogs. She's now, because she doesn't want to finish editing the Shut vlog. Shut up. No, that's Cut. not why. It's because it works out nicely in three chapters. I was watching. Okay, I will admit it's hilarious. Thank I watched you. it on the plane last night, and I'm glad you didn't tell Part me. Part two is live now. <laughs> It is live now. And I was laughing like a fucking idiot on the plane. It's so stupid. Like, <laughs> it was concerning how hard I was laughing out loud because I was bored on this plane and this plane had great Wi Fi. Like, yeah, it really incredible did. Incredible Wi Fi. Yeah. So I said, Lizzie, hit me with the link. And so I'm watching it just laughing like a fucking idiot. But I am still pissed that you can't just edit the second 12 minutes and put it all together. Well, because then it would have been really, really long. Because if you got to remember, there's 12 minutes that pre precedes this second 12 minutes. I always post 20 minute vlogs. Yeah, but this would have been like... Okay, whatever. What's Let us know plus, if you like what's, that Liz what's, is... What's I mean, 20 plus... Part of me... 12 plus 12 60? is 24. Is it 60 minutes? What's three times two? Six? It would have been an hour long vlog, bro. I understand cutting it into two parts. That's not right. I it felt, wouldn't have been an hour long. <laughs> this, the details don't matter. Right. <laughs> it's a fun video. The math's not mathing, sis. Uh, but let me know if you watch it if you're like... Like, oh, oh, they'll let you know. I Shut the fuck it. up. <laughs> let me live. My car's in the fucking shop. My dog's sick. I've got eye lumps. I've got cancer recurring on my arm. No, eat, I'm starting eat to eat my ass if the 12 minutes isn't enough for you people while I'm having my anniversary. <laughs> you didn't do anything for your anniversary. We went to well, dinner. What I'm saying no, is it's your excuse. She goes, I can't, add, I can't add the other 12 minutes because it's my ninth anniversary. And I was like, okay, I'm being an asshole. Like, it's your workflow. Let me just tell you, after I watched it, I was like, Oh, fulfilled enough and excited for next week. Yes. So maybe you're on to something. I'm on to something. And I'm sorry for being so aggressive. I told her very rudely in the text, if you don't edit all of this and do your job, I will not participate in your vlogs any longer. He said that in front of Chris, too. In front of Chris. Yes, I did. And Chris was like, stop fighting. <laughs> Chris was like, come on, guys. Let's just be friends. We won't. Chris was like, let's go back to Pinkberry. Remember when we had so much fun at Pinkberry as a family and no one was fighting? Remember? <laughs> mm. I did take a handful of fiber pills and then Joe and I went to dinner where I had a salad and then we went to an arcade to go fuck around but the fiber pills kicked in oh. before we could play a single game and he's like, let's just play one game and I was like, take me you know. He was like, what's going on? I was like, well, you know, I've got seven anal fissures and I took a handful of fiber and I don't feel comfortable shitting in this fucking arcade with children around. Happy ninth, babe. Yeah, so we like get in the car and I then became the psycho driver. I was like, because we got to get home. He was like, all right. Are you okay right now? No, I'm not. I'm never okay. <laughs> What's going on with your leg shakes? This is probably ADD. You're like really making me. I'm sorry if it's something that's natural to you right now, but can you just try to be conscious? Because I just, feel like it's I might shaking just be, the whole frame. I'm just trying to flash some puss to Chris. Can you just chill? No, it's hot and I'm ADD. Now it's hot. It's been hot. Girl. You should have seen. <laughs> <laughs> but I did shave my thighs. Since I've seen you last, I'm a changed woman. I saw Taylor Swift for the second time. <sighs> Am I only happy when I'm with her? Yeah. It's so incredible. It's crazy. I was listening to Taylor Swift on the way here, just like, oh my God, don't cry. But the whole experience <laughs> of her concert is like where I want to be at all times. It is pure joy. And here's the other thing to link this back to Barbie. Taylor Swift has been unapologetically and full fucking throttle Taylor Swift her entire fucking career. And I love that. I love the, the song Marjorie gives me the fucking sobs and life lessons that everybody needs without being like, 
you know, this is the point of it. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, and I fucking love that. You need to calm down can relate to every abusive boss or partner I've ever had in my life. And it just, it fills me with power. The like, I, the, what's the other song on Lover where she's like, and I forgot, I forgot that you existed. <laughs> And I thought that it would kill me, but it didn't. <laughs> like, I just, as an experience, because like most people know all the songs she's singing, it's just like three cocktails in, just like screaming my lungs out. It's just exactly where I want to be. And not to be dramatic, but she's saving the world. <laughs> She's saving the world's economy. I'm not even kidding. No, I've seen She's these articles She's literally everywhere. saving the world's economy. And I feel it. Both places that w- when we went to Vegas to see her, the town was a buzz. Like yeah. the energy that shifts when this woman is in your city is wild. All the news yeah. channels are talking about it. Everywhere you go, people are talking about it. All the local places are playing her music. Yeah. It's like this energy. And that's what I kept telling Shane. I was like, you like get closer to the stadium and it's like an energy that you can't create it's It's like what this woman has created is like mind-blowingly incredible it's a she is a goddess yeah even in when (laughs) i was there at the second night in denver and she was like i do have to say i'm the only artist to ever sell out the stadium two nights in a row and i'm just like you fucking go girl get it bitch (laughs) you do this shit um did you see when um the stage you know how she's supposed to like go under the stage or whatever Mm -hmm. the trap door didn't open one night so she had to just sprint all the way across the stage (laughs) and she tweeted herself because people it went viral a little bit and she tweeted still swift af boy (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but you're right like there is like you can tell like this little girl's family was trying to hoodwink and like they wanted to surprise her with the tickets so they didn't tell her until the day of but they took her to where the concert was and they're just filming her and she's looking around she's like i think taylor swift is playing here tonight and they're like, why do you think that? She's like, well, look at all the, these girls are in glitter. Like those, those, these girls are in glitter. Like I think Taylor Swift is playing here tonight. And she's like, she thought she was in this town to go to an aquarium. Mm-hmm. And then later that night, they're like, well, we're not really going to an aquarium. She's like, oh, she's like, we're going to Taylor Swift. She's like, we're gonna go stand outside the auditorium. And she was so excited. And they're like, no, we get, we got real tickets, baby. You're going in. And she's like, I'm going in. <laughs> I love all those, t- all those like you know, surprise, you're going in things. Right. I've only seen one that rubbed me the wrong way. It was a girl, a little girl whose family was like, she already knew she had tickets. And then their surprise was they were floor seats. Right. But it's like, I don't know. <laughs> that didn't hit as, hit as hard for me. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, SeatGeek not only uh, sponsored this podcast today, oh, but they shit. partnered with me on uh, TikTok, which, yes, I came back to TikTok yes. for SeatGeek. And we're giving away two floor tickets to one of her Los Angeles shows. <laughs> so you just have to go over to my TikTok. You tag somebody that you want to go with and you follow SeatGeek on TikTok. Listen, SeatGeek, I'm right here. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me so See, have you not heard the week i've had okay hold on hold on it's wednesday <laughs> now uh this ends on my tiktok i think in the next few days so if you want to get into this go over there and get in on it on my uh, tiktok account SeatGeek chooses the winner i'm gonna pin the winner in the comment section can i call SeatGeek? yes <laughs> can, can i tell them the week i've had i still have hope for us see but here's the other thing my, right now in the condition that my car is in my tickets are selling for five thousand dollars a piece do you know how hard it is to not sell those tickets because of how much that money would change my life right now? A piece? And I'm hold a piece. Wow. And I got them for like 1500 each. Which is still very crazy. Which is crazy. It's why and isn't that wild what Taylor Swift I know she's not personally selling yeah. the tickets for that, but I wish she was. I do too, honestly. I wish I could give that money to Taylor Swift, because I'm not happy about who the fuck I gave it to. She is doing fine though. I read every night she's making upwards of five point seven million dollars per fuck show yes. after she pays for the venue, the staff. Fuck yes. Everything going on. And I think that's pre merch. Yeah, I've never been so happy for a person. And so in my whole I just life. think you go get it. <laughs> Girl. You fucking and do like, it, bitch. You deserve do it for all, all of money. us. I hope that I can find a way to be there in LA, just drunk screaming my life away. Can we call Seek Geek? Yes, yeah, Seek Geek, <laughs> come back to me. Seek Geek, you could give me a car, Seek Geek. It's the same thing, guys. It's the same thing. I know it might look like I'm a privileged, unemployed Nepo baby in Los Angeles, but like, I'm only a little privileged. It's just a little bit of privilege. Okay, well, I did take you once. No, I'm not even talking about you. I'm talking to Seek Geek. Seek Geek got me there with Stacy, yeah. my brother's wife. Who really deserved it. Who really deserved it. Yeah. We had so much fun. And I'm hoping they'll come through for the LA show too for me. 
<laughs> Listen, I'm just asking for a car seat, Geek. It's not that much. I mean, it's got to be easier for you guys to get me a car than Taylor Swift tickets right now, guys. Just a car. And it's like, it can be used. I'll take a car with 15,000 miles on it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, well, we talked for 43 minutes about our lives. Um, <laughs> let's see if we want to... Oh, well, I have some, like... Do we want to do hot topics or... I can save these more, like... For the car. For the car. Yeah, okay, let's get into some hot topics. So, you put in here the selling sunset ladies don't own their clothes. No, they don't. And so, I guess Brie had an interview with people and... She said, there's no budget. They, Netflix gives the them no budget for wardrobe. doesn't help with anything, nor do they pay for any of it. I want to make that very clear. And that goes for the makeup as well. And I thought... That that's... sounds like Selling Sunset should go on strike. Well, I thought that's a little crazy because their show is known for their fashion yeah. and known. And then I started thinking, well, season one, it really wasn't. Like, Chrishell was showing up to film in, in outfits beaters. that we would have in our closet which right. is like fine but not selling sunset mm -hmm. and i do think christine was like the trailblazer the trailblazer for like upping the other woman's fashion because she was like showing up like she was on the runway every single day and then mm -hmm. i felt like season two three four all the girls started stepping it up and then netflix is like well we're filming your life why would we give you budget mm -hmm. and in my head i'm like well even clever like would give me clothing budget you really know? yeah they would wow they would give me like every time we did an award show they'd hand me like 250 like granted it's not that much mm -hmm. but it helps when i did those low budget movies we had to pay people a fee if we used their clothes as wardrobe wow because you have to pay for it to be cleaned or if it's destroyed, like you have to pay for it. And then I started thinking, well, it's crazy that they won't pitch in, but they'll vocalize on what they want. Because then I also remember like a controversy where Christine was like, I'm only comfortable wearing one pieces and production was pushing back, telling her to wear a bikini. Mm. And so I was just like, so they're not going to give you budget for clothing, but they're going to have input on what you as a woman wear. Listen, ladies, the picket lines are strong. You <laughs> can join us. Get some good networking done. <laughs> just kidding. I saw one of my favorite things is there's this casting director that has just been, uh, uses her platform online to inform actors like how to be chill or whatever. And one of her things that she posts is, remember the picket lines are not networking opportunities. And I was like, says you, Erica. The fuck? <laughs> um chelsea did say though like uh we she also made a statement somewhere and said we don't uh get wardrobe or glam budget but she did say this is standard in reality tv this is reality tv you come as you please and a part of me was like well i think both are true like yeah. i do agree like what makes reality tv special is that you're seeing people as they are but this show has become more of like a fantasy yeah. of real life i mean life they rent locations life. to shoot in no so I, I, they can rent the clothing the women are shooting in yeah and i was listening to mary on a podcast and all of these things are kind of going together at once but uh the hosts of that podcast were just saying like you look so fantastic this season and she's like well i finally caved and got a stylist mm -hmm. because trying to find outfits for the show was proving to be a full-time job yeah. but i already am filming the show and an actual real estate agent so i just didn't have the time and to try to look good who's actually working like the, most. the manager yeah who right. definitely sold the most real well, estate well that's what i was gonna say when you pulled up that info it seemed like she was the one who was actually a real estate agent yeah and so she was just saying yeah i like caved and i do pay for my own makeup and i do mm. pay for my own stylist and you either have to source the clothes it, it's just fascinating for a show that's all about the aesthetics mm -hmm. but i'm sure i mean you kind of weigh the pros and the cons of something like that you're like you try as hard as you can to get the budget but if you don't the platform's still better than not having it at all it's like Ugh. you get the good and the bad Ugh. um well while you're talking about the strike lines you put in hillary duff sings while she pickets <laughs> Yeah, Hillary Duff joined the picket lines. A lot of SAG actors are on the picket lines, and Hillary Duff saying, "This is what dreams are made." And of. I do have to say, like, I Hillary Duff can do no wrong in my book. But yeah. when she was posting her like down picketing, I did have to look at her comments just because it does seem a little crazy that all these like no, and it's not the picket lines aren't all wealthy actors, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of wealthy actors, and they're like posting it on social media. And I understand well, they're they're campaigning for what they're worth and to be treated just 
as they should be but it is funny to like looking from an outsider's perspective to be like this is the happiest picket line i've ever seen all these people are smiling they all have mansions <laughs> like, they don't all have mansions though a majority but a lot of these celebrities do is what i'm saying like yeah, a hillary but duff i just and... i think it's really important though to qualify that because i did i said not no, all of these people right let me a majority of them do not so when right. hillary duff shows up to the picket line it's in solidarity and to bring power to the people that don't have as much as her which i understand it's yeah. just funny need to go through the comments and it's like <laughs> this yeah. is a very cheery picket line when you go back to your and i i understand like that's five percent of actors yeah i'm not saying this is a blanket statement yeah it might even be less than five percent of actors right um because a majority of them have multiple jobs and can't make their rent no i've seen all yeah. the reels that are going viral about all the people that are series regulars and still can't afford their life yeah. i understand and well the one that i saw that was so fucking crazy is like it literally doesn't even cost a full percentage of the revenue of the earnings of these like major ceos of these companies mm -hmm. to just say yes to all of the demands it costs them not even one percent of what they're earning yeah and they're still just not saying yes and, and that's fucking crazy. In my mind, there's no way that they're not going to be able to give. I mean, there's just... I mean, it's hard because they're, you know, the people who don't have Hillary Duff money are fucked. Yeah. They're fucked. Yeah. And and uh, to like, they're, there it's... are funds. I don't know who had posted, but there is a fund where you can like, if you want to help actors while or writers while they're on strike, mm -hmm. you can, uh, I'll find it and put it in the link below, but I... you can help support them while they're unable to work. Yeah. And I know that writers like guild members on both sides can find um, links to places where if you show your membership card, they will give you a reduced price on something that you're buying there. Wow. I did see too, though, like a 24 has uh, some films in production and stuff, and that's because they aren't part of the studio system and they are uh, meeting the demands of the actors. Yes. So SAG is allowing that. Yeah. So I do think that's very empowered, like empowering yeah. to be able to find those kinds of productions and those kinds of jobs while still making your statement towards these big studios. Yeah, I will be interested to see how that plays out because I do know that sometimes like production companies like A24 do partner with studios for distribution. Right. But I do also know that it is completely possible for you to get a theatrical release of your film without including a studio whatsoever. So I, my hope is that they don't end up selling to the AMPTP and they do do a full independent release. And even if they did, the people, I mean, it still goes against kind of what everyone's striking for, but the talent, if they have back end, would still get their back end or what they've agreed to up front. With their contracts. Correct? Yeah, but for, like, I'm just saying, like, to fully stick it to the man, you give them no grapes. Yeah, and I was, I couldn't, when I first saw that, I was like, I can't even believe that's allowed, quite I, honestly. I, but I think it's good because you shouldn't penalize the people who are actually making art and not doing... And the, ready to play. Yeah. And ready to give people their fair shot of yeah. what they're bringing to the table yeah i think as long as it's not like as long as there's no nexus to the amptp and as long as your shit is fully independent and you're ad uh, you're adhering to all of the demands of sag and the, and i would also like to include the wga in it because it like if you can work morally and ethically why not get to work morally yeah. and ethically? No, I agree. You know, th like employ the crews, employ the hair and makeup women. Well, yeah, and that's and then, the other like, thing is th though, like the other parts of crews are also like very impacted right now. And yeah. they need to work. They're, well, they make even less. I know, and that's what I'm saying. And yeah. Like they stay pretty booked when they're working because they are in demand. But when everything's shut down yeah. like this, they're not going to be able to make their house payments. And th and that's the other thing. Like when I think about like my, my friends who are in hair and makeup or my friends who are in props or my friends who are grips like a lot of times like my grips my grip friends will go from a 12 hour gig to a 12 hour gig yeah and sometimes there is like only an hour for them to like i have a friend who will do a day job that shoots you know you know 6 a.m to 6 p.m and then he makes his way to another set to do a night shoot wow and that's fucking crazy. And I think that he's only making probably like 600 a day. And a majority of that goes out to taxes. So it and, and like legally, those days are 12 hour days. And that's fucking crazy. And yeah, you're being paid, quote unquote, overtime. But the industry standard is 12. Yeah. 
And if you're not going your full 12, you're ending under and you're not getting the worth out of your dollar or what you've budgeted for. But it's like, no, it really should be a 10 hour day. Yeah. Yeah. And then they take away your lunch. Your lunch doesn't count. You're not paid for your lunch. So no matter what, it's, it's an 11 hour day. <laughs> like, right. And that's fucking wild. And the whole and the cruise system was going to strike a couple of years ago and they just opted not to. Right. They reached an agreement, but it's like, well, I don't I don't think they got anything. And they they approved for a strike, too, and they just opted not to. All right. Well, I don't think everyone's so in on it. But. Uh, well, now you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's good to talk about. I'm glad yeah. we're talking about it, but I don't want to go on too long about no, it. No, but I do think that it's like a unifying thing that people have to understand. It's not rich people whining about being richer. It's about the working man not being able to make the living. It's all relative. It's all it, relative to a yeah. different union, not in the entertainment industry, striking for whatever rights they deserve. I, in a I'm universal way, it, it's raging against the machine. Fuck the fucking man. Get I yours. Do, I do worry a little bit about the people that are so vocal i'm like these studios aren't going to give you jobs which is so toxic to think right. about but it is like these actors that are like that are popular enough but like leading the charge i'm like you think these studios are going to give you a gig after this right but if you think about it i'm, I'm not even about hollywood now about the let's just talk about america right or let's talk about the world in regards to like the one percent one percent is very small there are a fuck ton more of us who are not the 1%. Screaming. Oh, I'm, I mean to scream. <laughs> and we can set their houses on fire and take back the world. It does not make sense that 1% of the population is ruling over 99% of us and all of us show up and say, okay, smack us in the face and take something else away today, daddy. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm over it. So if you catch me in the streets burning houses down, you know, I finally <laughs> fucking hit my end. I'm going to drive my fucking 2010 I mean, Prius into the fucking house of the guy who crazy, owns Disney. It's over for you. The crazy thing to me is, I mean, it's like, of course, the AI is worrisome, but it's really the residuals in streaming to me, which is like their big fighting yeah. point because it's like, it's what's deserved. It shouldn't even have to be something that people ask for. It's like, if they're the stars of the show or they're writing the show, they deserve the residuals for when the shows ran. I just, you know, I'm done with corporate greed. I'm just, I'm done with it. Like, okay. I've had enough. So, corporate greed's going to corporate greed, and I'm not here for it. I didn't read this. I just seen the headline, but you put it in here. I'm sure you know everything about it. Jordan and Kylie back together. Can you believe that? No, I could not. That's crazy, huh? And you want to know how crazy it is? I saw the headline and didn't care enough to click. But I knew you would inform me. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, that's it. The headline is what it is. Where were they at? What were they doing? Well, so apparently Jordan reached out and was like, I don't like that the way things ended and they've been talking a little bit behind the scenes and then they took their relationship public i like how we know this i oh i know it because like i'm in the group you know what i mean like we're fucking oh yeah friends. they're just texting here and there kylie's let me know that they met up here and well i mean someone let someone know because i figured it out <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they're back together and you don't care and that's fine back together yeah they broke up well, I remember. Yeah. I, I know that they broke up, but okay. Um, <laughs> it's just wild to me that people... People care? No. No, no, no. I mean, I understand why people care. That was a huge moment in pop culture, and it was like defining moment in the Kardashian history. Yeah. If you're a Kardashian historian. Right. Um, but it's wild to me more so that people just know people's lives. Mm -hmm. Like this Ariana Grande thing, it's wild to me that like people are confirming that her and Dalton, her husband, have been separated since the beginning of the year. And it's like, well who's people and who's confirming this? Yeah. And it's like then she spotted at Wimbledon without her ring and next to was it Andrew Garfield? Andrew Garfield, yeah, it was. No, I think yes, that's it was. Her. Okay, next to Andrew Garfield, but that's not that, who the alleged that kind boyfriend of sparked is. rumors, and then it kind of came out that she's dating her co-star, who looks on just Wicked, like her brother, who's been married for four years with a kid. It's yeah. like. I don't even like to comment on all of these things because it's like there's so much real life involved in so many real yeah. people's feelings. I just more so like how did these people know these things? Is it like does her husband, her estranged husband, does Ariana's a husband that feels left out get mad and tell a tabloid i think that can happen but i think more often than anything it's like you know a friend tells a friend and that and then the third party who's not really friends with ari is going to tell somebody who and get money for it hmm. 
because I remember back in the day, like before the internet was a huge deal, like celebrities used to sell the first photo of their baby to someone, and if they were friends with a photographer, they would that they would they be like, still do go to people oh, and they sell do. their babies or their weddings or their, their photos just for clarity, not their babies, <laughs> <laughs> which does feel a little strange to me it's like yeah well i mean i know some people where they're like yeah we let our friend take a picture of our baby so that they could sell it and i'm like so <sighs> that's okay. a lot <laughs> all right you guys well sorry for being so political today i mean i'm not sorry about it let's set fire to the world <laughs> taylor swift for president james cameron can be her vp <laughs> Honestly, that's a great pairing. Is it not? No, I'm into it. It's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. We got to make some calls. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, Next week, we're going to try something. I'm not sure what yet. Oh, everyone's going to be surprised. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Make sure you're following us all on social media. Lizzie's part two of her three-part Colorado series (laughs) is live now. Chris is one day going to post a second YouTube video. Yes, one day. (laughs) And I'll have his channel linked below. We hope you have the most fantastic day. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And And that's that's the the sip. sip.